Really? Then I'm going to talk about everyone's favorite OG beast, the original Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera. Hey guys, Nathan Brandon Masters. You know what this is, the original Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera. If you've been with me for a while, you know it looks a little bit different than it did when uh, you know, when I first got it. I changed some things up. Still got the shoot villa cage on here. Uh, this is the Canon, this is a Canon kit lens. I have like a few uh, EF lenses, got the 50 millimeter, uh, 24 millimeter. Uh, that's why I got like, a, <laughs> that's one of the reasons I got uh, the T4i because I can change lenses between these and EF lenses are generally cheap depending on what you're trying to buy. Uh, but I have this and uh, you guys saw this, this is the field world monitor and this is new. I got a side handle for it. I went ahead and got the small rig uh, battery uh, adapter so I can put the Sony batteries right here. This just works out phenomenally. Works out 100% better than the, uh, the way I had it uh, set up originally. I can still put a microphone on here if I want to have a, another, um, uh, another piece that I can put on here. Actually, there was a cold shoe. Uh, I thought there was a cold. Oh, yeah. I put a microphone over there, but... I mean, if you hear the sound coming out of this camera, I'm I'm not going to use that for anything. So <laughs> this is what it looks like now. And I'm going to be using this. Uh, we're shooting Crisis Function Awakening. We want to finish that up. Uh, we started shooting that in 2017, 2018, somewhere around there. Around the same time we shot Transit. Crisis Function Awakening takes place after Transit. So I'm going to be shooting a lot of it. With this, you know, me, I tend to shoot with multiple cameras depending on what we're doing. I do a lot of running gun stuff, and sometimes we're in locations where they're okay with us filming, but it's like we're they're okay with us filming as long as we don't get in people's way or we don't make a draw a lot of attention to ourselves. So a lot of times we're in the, you know, things like the Chicago Cultural Center and places like that. The Chicago Public Library, even they've cracked down on filming. So Places are getting more iffy about people filming in their location, and it's really for legal reasons and stuff like that. But uh, something like this, you can bring in, and a lot of times their preference is that you don't bring a tripod in because if you're doing something big, you're using a big camera, they're going to want to know, well, what exactly are you doing? Now, we get away with it a lot because we stay out of people's way, but yeah, you know, you get the idea. People are kind of iffy about what people are doing in their location. So uh, this I'm going to actually replace. I'm going to replace this with one of those ball, with one of those uh, monitor adapters. My preference is for the monitor to be a little bit lower. So we're going to be doing that. Also, uh, I have this. This is the Canon XC10. This is a camera that doesn't get a lot of shine. It's part of their cinema line, but it's, it's a camcorder for the most part. It has f2.8 to 5.6 fixed lens. And I'm going to tell you, the 2.8 is at the widest angle. Anything beyond the widest angle, you don't have 2.8 anymore. Uh, this camera was marketed so poorly. This, the, the marketing on this camera was trash. And I'd tell that to anybody. Uh, I saw the, little, the film they did with this camera. They did this film called The Battle of the Ages. Bruh. I'm not going to insult the film. I'm sure the filmmakers actually put their heart and effort, you know, they put their heart and soul into it. But it was one of those things that you saw Canon had a lot of money and they said, let's just throw it into this instead of actually showing uh, what the camera can really do. Ooh, we're shooting an action scene in broad daylight. Yeah, if your camera can't do that, you made a crappy camera. Show us what your camera can actually do. And there's other YouTubers who were showing uh, what this camera was capable of. I literally learned more about this camera in one minute from a random YouTuber named Brian Rhodes than I did from that whole uh, Battle of the Ages video. Like, literally. And I'll put a link in the description so you can see his video and a few others that actually show what the XC10 can actually do. And this is a weird thing because it's actually hard to find video on this camera. You know, I was looking for information on this camera and YouTube served up about 
20, 20, 30 videos somewhere in there. And so I'm like, there's gotta be more about this camera. I had to keep looking and keep looking. I mean, over a matter of days. And finally, YouTube started serving up more videos. And they were smaller videos, videos that had 100, 200 uh, views. Some of them had 50 views, which says some things about YouTube. YouTube seriously does not put your videos out here. If you're not those bigger YouTubers, a lot of times they're not putting your videos out there. That's just the reality of it. I saw some videos about this camera that Canon themselves should have made, okay, that show what this camera can do at night, that show what this camera, uh, how this camera looks. Now, people's big issue is that this camera can't get depth of field. Well, it, you know, if you know about video cameras, you know it can get depth of field, but a lot of you already know what the trick to that is. So as I mentioned before, I tend to shoot on different cameras. Each camera has a, its own purpose. And so this is camera I'm gonna be using to shoot fight scenes with. So I don't have to worry about uh, the focus and stuff like that as much. Uh, this camera, it's not using Canon's dual pixel autofocus, but it's actually good. I was actually shocked by it because you're used to that, you know, that new autofocus, but this, you know, it locks on to you. It's got the, uh, the facial uh, recognition, locks on to you. It's nice, touch to focus, nice. So not now, it, it, it's not fast. It's not fast focusing, but it will focus. Uh, and when it locks onto the thing, stays locked on. So I got no complaints with this. Very nice 8-bit uh, 422 color space. And uh, this, this camera just really got uh, the tail end of the deal. Now there's another one, there's the X, the, uh, XC12 or the XC15, which the only thing they do is they add uh, an XLR. It's like, okay, I, I guess. Uh, you know, I do all my stuff external. Uh, that's We've been doing that uh, since the perfect letter. No problem. Never had a problem after that. And I'm going to continue doing it. I used to Zoom H1. And uh, I have another microphone. Uh, I have the Deity microphone that I use. Never had a problem. We're going to continue doing uh, external audio. It's, it's just a ton better. And I also have a Zoom H4 in, I think it is. I don't know how good of a buy it was when it first came out, but you can grab this for $1,000 or under right now. So right now is a better time to buy this thing. But then again, right now you have a lot of other options for $1,000. So... You know, really take a look at this uh, if you're thinking about buying it because the, the, the image quality is great. This camera doesn't need a cage. It's got the side handle and you can tilt, bam, side handle. Got a nice big monitor right there. Now, this would have been better as a flip out monitor, but that's like, you know, this is not a vlogging camera. Uh, I mean, I mean, I guess I, I mean, they just walk around with these big ass cameras anyway. So uh, it's not a vlogging camera. This is a shooting camera. This is a documentary, uh, a ENG cameras, documentary filmmaking and things like that. The image looks really nice. Okay. Really nice image. Uh, high bit rate 4K. So this is like uh, 300, uh, 300 megabytes, uh, 300 megabytes. And then there's a uh, 200 uh, megabytes. And this thing takes, there we go. So uh, this takes uh, CF cards, Canon LP6, uh, so what is it, the LP, uh, LP E6N batteries, LP E6N. So I got a few of those. This thing is ready for use. I added a little top handle to it. Now this is a nice camera, feels good in the hand, but it's light enough to hold with this top handle. Don't have to worry about it sliding off or anything like that. It's on there steady. And this is the, the UU, uh, UU, UU rig, I think it is. I think they call it UU rig. Uh, I'll, I'll link it in the, uh, just look for it in the affiliate links. The one with the red bolt right here, that's nice. That, that gets that on there nice and tight. So, and I also have another place for microphone and things like that. So when I get my monitor adapter, I can put it right up here. So I can, it can go up there or it can go right up here. And again, it puts the monitor on there so it's not too tall because if I put this on there, it's going to be all the way up here. So these are the two cameras I plan on using for Crisis Function Awakening. And uh, I'm going to be doing some more stuff with, uh, I'm going to be doing more stuff with both of these cameras. 
Uh, I do at some point want to get a Panasonic G9. Uh, I was looking at the uh, BGH1. That's what I wanted, the BGH1. Uh, but it's like they have this camera and they took out the, uh, you know, they took out the stabilization. I'm like, hell, would you take out the stabilization? And I know that they expect for that camera to be on a, for that camera to be on a tripod, but no, no. People might want to do some handheld stuff with that camera. Don't put the, you know, but uh, I plan on doing that in the future, grabbing a G9. Uh, another issue is obviously money. Usually not a big deal to me. I mean, back in the day, we shot the original crisis function for under $1,000. But uh, I also knew that when I uploaded that video to YouTube, when I uploaded that movie to YouTube, it was going to make more money. And that's how I was able to continue making films and buy equipment and pay actors and stuff like that. I was doing that because maybe one film might only make a certain amount of money a month, but all together would bring in a decent amount uh, every month. As a matter of fact, the earnings were going up and up and up until, you know, you guys know that story. If you've been with me for a while, you know that things changed at YouTube and uh, that wasn't the case anymore. So I'm iffy about um, how this is going to work financially. Uh, or, you know, if it's going to be beneficial. I mean, I know it can sit here on YouTube and just make little bits of money. Uh, you know, like uh, last year, like last month, I think my movies made about maybe 10 bucks all together. Uh, so, so I'm trying to weigh the financial benefits, the pros and cons. I might do a crowdfunder with this. So uh, I'll see. Uh, so that's it, guys. This is what we're going to be using. This one I'm gonna actually be keeping not just for filmmaking, but for client work and stuff like that. If somebody says, hey, I got this thing I want you to shoot, I'll grab this and shoot it. So, all right guys, you take it easy. Nathan Brandon Masters, be on the lookout for this. Hey guys, real quick before I go, uh, I checked the mail not too long ago and uh, I did actually, let me move it out the way. Uh, I did actually get the mount it's here. This is the Andy. Let me pull it into frame a little bit. This is the Andy Senna monitor mount, and uh, you can grab these off of Amazon. They're actually pretty cheap. Uh, these things, uh, you, you tighten them up. Uh, I don't know where, what I did with the. Uh, is this it? No, they so it's you get an Allen key with it, and uh, you tighten this thing down. And I mean, this is tight. So you can put the big battery on there and everything, and it shouldn't be any problem at all. Uh, this this feels pretty solid. So I, I might do a review on that uh, by itself. But I uh, just wanted to kind of show it to you guys. This is what the setup looks like now. It's a little bit shorter than it was and a little bit more compact, just, just slightly, but uh, nice enough. And I can also just take this off and put it on my uh, XC, on my... Uh, XC10 here. So, uh, very nice. I like these. All right, guys, you take it easy. Nathan Brendan Masters, Austin. Don't look back, we're here to stay. A life we knew would come one day. And this is it, the borderline, to where the future leaves us behind. The fire will burn and never die. Looking through the eyes of a so just fly.